Today we're going to compare the Samsung S10e versus the Oppo Reno Ace. And the Reno Ace does have a lot more cameras on the back, so let's see how the Samsung can stack up against it. So this is the low light test of the front facing camera, and I'm just walking around the street. Nothing too special, just a bunch of street lights and lights coming off of buildings. But I do notice that the Samsung is way more saturated than the one on Oppo. Talking about the portrait mode first, the experience is really identical. When you're too far from the subject, it will tell you that to get in closer and vice versa. On the Oppo Reno Ace, you can tell the background, the focal length, is a bit wider than the Samsung's. Another experience that's different between the two is on the Samsung, there's more of the background blur effects which you can change, which honestly I don't think a lot of people would use too much except for the color pop which is probably the coolest one, but on the Oppo, it's more of a filter. For the performance and the cutouts, they're really similar to each other, so while I'm taking both pictures, I really don't notice anything that sticks out saying this is much more worse, so my whole overall experience of portrait mode is really similar. For everyday situations, the ultra wide angle lens on the Samsung is by far the widest one. So if you like that super wide and slightly distorted look, then you can just go over to Samsung S10e. As we zoom in each time, the Oppo Reno Ace does have its telephoto lens, so it's obvious that the Samsung is not going to win there. If you realize you zoom in a lot when you're taking pictures, then obviously pick a phone with a telephoto lens. For HDR, I would go with the Oppo Reno Ace. In the shadows, you can clearly see more detail on the Oppo, whereas on the Samsung, it's kind of dark. And that may have to do with the Samsung contrasty look because I do prefer the colors coming out of the Samsung much better. Because on the Oppo, even though the HDR seems better, I would say it feels like it's just bringing up the shadows where we can see a little bit more noise in the darker spots. And I think that's not going to be a big deal for a lot of people out there just because they can see more. So when they clearly see the brighter picture, then I think a lot of people would prefer the Oppo than the Samsung. But going back to the colors, the Samsung is obviously more contrasty and more saturated. So the blues really stick out from the sky. The browns off of the tree really sticks out. Whereas on the Oppo, it's kind of dull and flat. And honestly, that's how it really looks like from my eyes. For low light shots, I noticed a switch happening. I realized on a Samsung, the ultra wide angle lens keeps that natural yellow street light look. And the ultra wide angle lens on the Oppo kind of does the white balance thing where it makes it really neutral. But when we switch to the main lens, it kind of switch. So the Samsung does the more neutral white balance thing. Whereas on the Oppo, it shows that slight yellow tungsten look from the street lights. In really dark situations, I do realize the Samsung is slightly sharper and night mode works well on both phones. But the experience is a bit different. On the Oppo, it's kind of more simple. It takes a burst of pictures and it will do its thing. On a Samsung, it tells you to hold on for however long, which I don't know. I wish there was a timer so I would know. And then you'll see a yellow saving progress bar on the shutter button. And it seems to me on a night mode, the Oppo tries to fix its white balance the most while the Samsung kind of gives a more natural look. Now moving on to 4K video, the stabilization is really identical. I can't really tell which one is better. But the biggest difference here is the color. With no surprise, the Samsung does come out way more saturated. As you can tell, looking at the leaves and the trees, the brown really sticks out. But the Oppo image really looks closer to real life. So from my eyes, what I see is actually what the Oppo sees. For the ultra wide angle lens, it's nice that the Samsung still keeps its color to its consistency, whereas on the Oppo, it's, it's giving off a greenish hue. The stabilization is really good on both of these phones, but I feel like that greenish hue kind of just kills the image for me. And it's only up to 1080p on the Oppo, so for me, I would just avoid shooting ultra wide angle lens on the Oppo Reno Ace. Moving on to 4K60, it's a clear winner that the Oppo Reno Ace is the winner here because it's obviously stabilized whereas on a Samsung, no stabilization at all. So if you're planning to shoot 4K60 on a Samsung, you definitely would want a gimbal. Now moving on to low light, the biggest thing that we're looking for here is how bad the micro jitters can be on each phone. And the one that sticks out the most is the Oppo Ace. So this is the biggest factor for me on choosing which one has the better video quality. For the ultra wide angle lens, I feel like the Oppo is doing a better job at white balancing than the Samsung. Since it's trying to be more saturated on that end, the Oppo does look more natural. I typically avoid using ultra wide angle lens at night unless I'm in a really, really bright area. Now for 4K60, I don't know what happened here or how the stabilization is turned off on Oppo because when I did the iPhone versus the Oppo Reno Ace, 
The stabilization worked fine in low light, and I didn't see any settings to turn off stabilization, so I think this is more of a glitch, so now I know that this may happen to the Oppo phone. But there you have it, that is my comparison between these two phones. I do think the Oppo is more of a natural, neutral looking camera, and the Samsung is obviously more saturated. And of course the Oppo would make the better choice if you are planning to zoom in your pictures a lot. So follow me on Instagram, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.